Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and to John's Chats and uh, hello there he is in the signal box how you doing John? Hello Tony how are you doing? I'm, I'm fine fine fit as a fiddle Yeah, John, it's great to have you back again. Um, before we get stuck in, I've noticed uh, there's a couple of questions uh, some of the subscribers um, have been asking. Um, now then, um, yeah. Firefox 48 uh, is interested in the concept iron trains uh, in the steam days. Can you give us a bit of info on that? Oh, well, I worked mainly at concert in the, after after the steam days, uh, but I knew I used to go into the signal boxes, the lakes of uh, Green Lane and Pontop, during the steam days when I was a lad as well in 1949 when I was working in Newcastle, I popped in, you know, and see these uh, old trains. And in the fifties, uh, before I joined the army. You could see, I had an aunt live near the railway there, and I used to go there and I'd pop over the lane and see the lot at uh, Green Lane or Pond Up. But you had these uh, steamers, uh, uh, they had uh, Q7s, I think they allocated uh, Tain, Tain Dock there, as well as uh, Thompson O1s used to run. Well, I couldn't tell the difference between them until they told us what they were. Apparently, they looked the same to me. and. Um, I think the wheel arrangement was different on them. But they were the, they were the trains you had before the 9Fs were running, you know. And uh, they used to get, they had like, these special wagons made uh, for to take the old, the old trains to concert. And uh, after that, and uh, around about the 1966 way, there was uh, that a change and they, they run the trains via Tyne Yard because uh, they closed that. Uh, Washington branch for some reason, you know, these dead Washington South of the trains used to used to run from Tain Yard, from uh, Tain Dock to Tain Yard, and then up the concert that way, you see. And then it changed again because uh, they found that the your the cars weren't suitable because a uh, Tain Dock all place closed and they start to run the old trains from Thornaby or Red Car or that way with Thornaby engine drivers, you see. Well, they had to change the um, ore cars because the original ones weren't suitable for the main line. So these, and they had their uh, twins. Well, it, it, for, when they first started to run from Tain Dock, uh, they had twin sources on, you see. Now the tw type 24 is the sources. Type 24 sources, and you should run via Tain Yard with the Tain Dock ore cars, you see. And then when they went to Thornaby, uh, the completely build another set of cars that would run on the main line and use type 30, uh, twin 37s uh, from Thornaby and used to run via the Washington branch the old way but what they used to do is to come over the leams down the leam side to Washington south and there was a special uh, sidings there where they could get in run round and run up the old Biddick branch was the old Stanhope and Tyne up the concert that way and then uh, when that finished uh, altogether, and I think it was in 1981, it uh, all collapsed again and they closed the course of traffic diminished over the years. And uh, this, is, this is a brief resume of it, like, the traffic diminished and in 1981 they just decided to close the steel works. And then all that was gone and they lifted the truck and everything. They, they proposed a passenger service from Newcastle up that way. And that wasn't mooted, and they just closed the whole lot. And now you can't recognise everything; it's all gone completely. Yeah. Can't see a thing that's left. It's a shame, that's isn't it? it. All right. Yeah. Is there anything you want to ask about the concert branch? You think? Yeah, uh, I what, suppose what, what, that covers it. That, that all I know about it, you know. But I did work. I did work the concert branch uh, with them over trains. You see, I used to, I, I used to go. Um, from Tyne Yard when I was in the Tyne Yard relief, uh, relief signalman. I used to go to South Peeler, mm -hmm. that was just up from Tyne Yard. It was Beamish, and then there was Anfield, Anfield Plain, or Anfield Signal Box. Then you got into the 
and the boxes up at Concert, Concert North, Concert West, and that, you know. And then down to um, Concert West, used to put the ore trains around to Concert Fell and onto the ore terminal there, you know. And I used to work all them jobs as well. And uh, Concert Fell was the first to wear. But uh, after, as I say, it all disappeared uh, in 81. Yeah, it's just, it's just travesty for the town, wasn't it? it uh... But the what, that lad, what, what he wants to know about their engines, uh, is a Thompson O1, that's right, is it? I don't know mm -hmm. what the, yeah, the other one is a Q7. And mm -hmm. uh, people used to think about Q6s, but there weren't a Q7s, you know, the Q6, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a boiler sort of overlap a little bit towards the, the buffer end. And, the, mm -hmm. and uh, the Q7 looked like the Thompson O1 to me, like, mm -hmm. they're both, both the same. All right, okay. Yeah, so that's great. Was it was was I heard that there were WDs on there as well. On that, oh, well, on, the WDs. There was there was uh, Q sixes, WDs. Uh, you always, well, what used to happen with the um, during the steam days, um, they had a the, the, the whether there were Thompsons or whether what um, of course the Thompsons couldn't pull the load that the, the nine Fs could. You see, so the had an extra, the, the uh, 9Fs had an extra wagon on. Uh, I think they had about 8 or 9, it was full 8 or 9, heavy old wagons, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, what were you saying there? This, uh, did, did, did the WDs end up being oh, the bank WDs, or they? yeah. Well, it was WDs, and, but they all seemed to be twinned. Like you got the 9Fs coming up. Mm -hmm. And he's, he used to come up to South Peeler, and there was always another 9F lie, lying on the side now, the independent or the side truck, South mm -hmm. Peeler. And it, uh, uh, South Peeler controlled a, a set of um, jack points, you see. And he used to run up past them and stop, and then the, the banker, which was another and I, uh, 9F, used to come up behind him, and then they'd toot and put in on it give us signals there and then they way up the bank and he used to uh, bank them all the way at the Anfield and he used to and he could pull his own load up from Anfield and then the 9F used to come back and they'd be wait for another one coming through but the same with the WDs if they had coal trains on they had to be banked as well with another WD they were big powerful engines them eh, afterward like you know WDs because I used to see them on the, on the riot branch a lot mm. you know yeah, it sounds like a fantastic sight with the, with those those engines. Well, and I full was at steam. South Peeler. I, I, I was well. Uh, I was at South Peeler once. Uh, I just happened to be there when the steam trains was on. I didn't actually go into the signal box, but I was around the area, you know. Mm -hmm. And hey, when you are seeing the trains coming up past uh, South Peeler, the be and that thought was a heavy gradient and. The, Tremendous, you know, especially with a cold morning. I suppose it'd be like that. But I used to see them steaming up there and then coming to a halt and be banked away. And that's I didn't actually go into the South Peeler box at that time, right? But I, I, I used to see it from the road, you know. Because mm. as I say, I didn't uh, actually bother work on the on the concert branch till I was in town, yard of town, yard relief. But uh, I seen all these engines running about the town up. All right, okay. Right, John, uh, the, the other question we had was from French Steam. And he's inquiring, well, it wasn't more of a question, it was a conversation that you two guys were having in the comments about a Chester Lee Street incident in 1968. Oh, yeah, that's right, uh huh. Can you. Oh, well, that. Yeah. Should I, well, that, that happened, uh, well, the. The signalman at Dunham, as far as I could read, had made a mess of the, uh, the two numbers. He had 1S12 and 9P12, you see. Now, class 9, he put that in first and then run 1S, run as, 1S12, you see. So you had that run, 1S12 run as a class 9. And, of course, the 9 run as 1S12 behind him, you see. Mm. Now, when he got, uh, well... It, as the lad said, he, he was learning, or he had a mentor, you know, looking after him and, uh, and uh, telling them what to do and the controls and whatnot. And he advised them uh, when he came to a double yellow at uh, Chester to uh, keep keep the power on. 
And of course, a lad, you, you've got to shut down when you come to a double yellow, but he's, he's, in, he's meant that said, keep the forward on, it's only a, a lot, what they call a land crab, that was a slow train going at Houston Junction, when Houston Junction was ahead, you see. And of course, a lad kept the power on, and he passed the yellow, but he must have seen a single yellow, uh, the, uh, as an automatic, as far as I remember, in front, you see. And then he, when he seen the automatic, you see, he put, and he had to take the power off, put his brakes on, ready to see a red. Well, nine times out of ten, with the instructor talent to keep the power on and the lad and crab going in the tying, the tying yard, when the, the, when the slow train cleared the junction, he might have had the double yellow, and the next one, which should have been a single yellow, would be green. See, because he cleared the junction, if you understand that. And that was the, that was the instruction he had from his uh, mentor. So what happened to him, he had to put the, take the power off, put his brakes on. And when he was going towards Houston Junction, he would see a red. Because it was like a delayed action, you see, for the slow trains down. You'll see a red, and then after a few seconds, you'd see a feather with a colour going down the, down Lewiston Junction, if you can understand that. And of course he went down to the reception signal. He seen the re when he got round the corner, he seen the reception signal was off. That was sometimes it's that white light and it showed an hour panel. But uh, there would be might have been different, maybe two two white lights for to go inside. Well he knew he had to stop then, you see. So he stopped because he said as he said, in the rules you must stop if you you know that it's a wrong uh, signal, you see. So he stopped there, got on the phone. Well, in the meantime, this class nine was coming down behind him. He'd been coming down behind him, you see. But of course, the signalman, I think I thought he might have uh, realised that that class nine had come down there uh, at a rate, hell of a rate, you know, for the reach Houston Junction. And he has one S12, who was, who was the class nine, crawling along behind him, you see. But of course, when the one is 12, that's that lad who brought it into St. Junction, stopped at the reception signal, the signing signal, he would get out, ring the phone. But of course, the signalman was busy, and he seen maybe the 9312, nine, nine, uh, who was actually, the, if you understood, is the one S12 stand at Houston Junction, he would answer that phone first and leave 9P12 to the last because he still had a light into the, into the reception signs, you see. Oh, right. So, of course, <laughs> of course, as he, of course, of course, 9P, this uh, 9th so called uh, 1S12 at Houston Junction come on the phone and say, hey, I'm, uh, I've got a green for right away here. He says, uh, what's a, I'm 9P12 for. The reception signs. Well, that would shut the thing. He looked down. He see the light flashing on the phone for the other train, which was nine P twelve there. <laughs> but it was, you know, and it was of course he was one S twelve. And um, of course, he got on the phone, and the range there and they cancel the signal. Well, he pulled both signals up, strips up. You see, but you've got to wait two minutes for each before you could change the route again. You see. But uh, the signalman uh, must have done that. He got in the shock. Anyway, he got uh, he'd get nine P12, change the number, and come bring him in and do something. And then he'd run uh, one S12, he change the number again, one S12 out at Lower Fell. And that, that large said, like he said, when uh, he got us onto the KAB, that's the King Edward Bridge, he'd go into Newcastle Station. He got five minutes signals there. So nobody knew any different if you understand all oh, that's a bit complicated like <laughs> <laughs> so can you uh, el elaborate on the on the two trains so the is12 was the no no one s12 one right? s12 yeah was uh, well he he was the one he was ap is that you think he's a he used to go to aberdeen uh, i think that one anyway he would come through you see and onto the slow but you see what the, the he's, he's meant to, Nine, 99 times out of 100 would be mm -hmm. right about keep the power on. Mm -hmm. It's only a lot of yeah. time going at a time, you see. Yeah. And of course, 
as I say, he tipped that double yellow, pass a double yellow, and then um, if, he would, if um, his man that was right, it would be green. Uh, uh, instead of a single yellow, he got a green there, he's right yeah. away. Yeah. But as I explained to you, he had to crawl into tie and come up to the reception signal, and then he had to get on the phone. He probably delayed there, and he had 9P12, you know. Yeah, yeah. If he stand the real uh, 9P12, stand at Houston Junction as 1S12. <laughs> and of course, and again, he'd come on the phone first, and after all, he'd pay, get the phone first, you know. And he got a shock and say, oh, that fella's down there, it's 1S12. And then he panic it, pull the strips up, but to change them over. And of course, he had to wait two minutes to be chewing his fingernails, and he cut it away. And of course, <laughs> once the uh, trains got away, he's thinking, well, he, he's gotten a really heavy check, that fella. You know, the yeah. 1S12, he's getting stopped all the guy. You know? yeah. Sometimes if you, he would get a heavy check at Houston, uh, you know, if it, suppose the the the, uh, the lad, the uh, French team, when he's driving there, suppose he took the power off, normally, you see, mm -hmm. a land crowd going in, like, you know. Yeah. Or sometimes it would be, see, it was a diversionary route as well, coming at Houston Junction. So, if there was something, uh, like a track down ahead of Houston Junction, which would have made him stop the AP and tell him to pass the single at danger because the track was down, to save that, what he would do, he'd, he'd, he'd set the strip in for the EP because it was a diversionary route. Mm -hmm. In that case, he would hit the double yellow, normally without, uh, hit the double yellow, hit the single yellow, and he'd move, and then he would see a red. And then, as soon as he hit the track circuit, maybe just before the AWS, if it was up at that time, he'd get a, a fella in, so it slowed the train right down, for the for to get into Houston Junction, that was a that was a uh, you know the part that uh, safety part. <laughs> but if you can understand all I don't know. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so what it what it boils down to, Tony, is yeah. that one S twelve. If you change them over, you know, mm -hmm. accidentally. Well, of course, you're going to cause a load of layer. But it's up to you. If I think if anybody that's looking at these two trains coming down, you see the nine flying down it, eating up the track circuit, you know, coming mm -hmm. towards Eastern Junction, and you see one has 12 crawled along behind you, think, hey, there's something wrong here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can so, you understand all that? Yeah. So, so the one S12 was the King's Cross to Aberdeen, the Express. Yeah, uh, uh, and, and the other one? One S12. Class 9 is a loose couple mineral. Ah, right. You see, yeah, with yeah. a guard's van on the back. Yeah. So it's yeah. loose couple. And he's got a, you know, he only, he's, he's restricted to a, a, a very low speed, really. That's why they call them land clubs coming inside, you see. Ah, that explains a hell of a lot now. <laughs> ah, well, you could get a 9, 9 uh, P12 or a 9 S12 or 9 T, you know, 9 P40, in it. but they're all just loose couple trains, you see. Um, and of course, getting them, and uh, that's why you, you, you had to shunt them out to bring it away, you know, because, uh, and I noticed when I used to run on tight margins, suppose that a few uh, trains to get away, I'd run them cross lanes all the way to Houston Junction out the way, and if there was any sixes, that was a uh, break easy, you know, mm -hmm. well, fully break trains, and come on, and I had a tight margin, I'd say to the driver, hey, uh, yeah, do your best there, get in, and I'll put you inside the Durham, the eight P's in the town, the express is in the town. And you say, right, and of course, they'll throw any drivers so well, maybe, and they would able to get away, and, and then you'd watch, he's, mo he's moving up to Durham, and you're watching the express, eating these trucks so that's behind him, getting closer and closer and closer, because he used to fly, you know, them fellas, it was uh, the HSTs, them. And of course, uh, you'd see that, on, he'd be on his last screen, maybe the EP, and then a class 60 get in, and that next one would be green, so he never delayed him. But yeah. sometimes he got a check, what you call a check or a heavy check. Yeah. And of course, the control would be on the me saying, hey, you've chopped that thing, an EP there, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> so that's it. If you can understand all that, right? Of course, it's 30 years ago, this, you know, I mean, it's hard for me to remember everything. <laughs> Oh, but if you want to go into further detail later on, and uh, maybe that driver, he 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 knows because he he'll remember exactly what happened at the time, you know. Yeah, that's great, John. But he never reported it. Uh, 
you know, and uh, I never put a no deal there. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't, if I'd been there, I wouldn't have said no deal then. Hopefully you'd get away with it. Um, was there any other in incidents that you uh, can think of uh, like that where you had to um, either divert trains or, or stop them? Well, I found you had to work hand in hand with the drivers on these things. I mean, they say they helped us, and I used to help them. There used to be some fellas used to report everything, but most of the segment were okay. And uh, and the drivers as well, and they bother with them. And that, some friends and all among them, a lot there. Uh, Rob the car, he was a boy at uh, Tainard, and he eventually became uh, his top man on uh, one of the links in Scotland. Now drives, uh, he's, well, the last time I saw him, he was driving the Virgin trains in Aberdeen and around the Glasgow area, you know. But the incidents uh, used to happen like that. Uh, you might get a, a heavy train uh, slide past the signal of danger, you know. Well, a, a driver passing the single in danger, you're supposed to report everything, you know. Well, it's a way to say what the driver said. Come on, hey, say, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll have you loaded, I've slipped past this single, you know. I say, well, hang on a second, and uh, wait a bit, and we wait till he got clear ahead, and then when the single would have changed to yellow, I just say, right, you've got a single yellow. And get on, he said, you know, I say, we knew we were going to have red, and the next one would be a red, right? And he would go away, and he and, uh, but you got, had to watch these top managers who used to come in from universities and uh, everything was by the rule book with them fellas, you know. They, they maybe got religious studies or something uh, uh, from uh, Oxford or somewhere and then they'd come in and get a top management job and they'd come down, a rule book, and we had to tell them what to do. We were showing them that it was all common sense, the railway you had the rules and you had common sense. So you had to watch them fellas, because one driver is on the DMU, he's on the door, DMU from Newcastle to Darlington, I think they went down. Uh, and uh, anyway, he's, he's on Greens all the way past Town Yard, and uh, he was supposed to stop at Chesley Street Station. Well, he had Greens all the way, and he must be a three day. He shot through Tenant through Chesley Street. <laughs> and he passed the signal ahead of Chesley Street and it went to red and I said, bye, he said, he's one shot through there. <laughs> and, then, and then I waited a few seconds and he, uh, a minute or so and he go, must have been a pretty way ahead of it. He says, uh, and he says, uh, I've should have been stopped at Chester, he says. Yes, he says, oh, any chance I can set set back? So I had a look and I pulled two signals up, there's an outcome and I pulled two signals up so he had a, yeah, two mix singles and two and a mix mathematics clear and they said but he didn't need that much. I said, go on, get into uh, get set back and then into chest that you take it easy, set back and you know, because the people will be wondering what's going on in there, said, oh, you know. <laughs> so anyway, um he set back and of course we cleared the signal the way and I never thought any more about it. So I got a phone call. Um this is from uh, we call him your Japanese officer. He looked like a Japanese officer, this fellow. I don't know. This is uh, so-and-so, I forget his name now. He says, I was on this train, he says, uh, going through Chesley Street, and the, the driver didn't stop, and he, he sat back. He says, well, you, did you, uh, do you know, who's the man that, uh, oh, that's what he said, that to the signalman on duty, that was it. And I said, do you know anything about that? And the lad says, no. He says, I wasn't on there. And he says, I was on yesterday. He said, he said, be Joe. But he said, call me Joe on the railway. I say, not John. That's my second name, Joe. John Joe. He said, oh, it'll be Joe. Uh, so and then when I came on, the uh, phone call again. And he said to me, exactly like that. Well, you want your duty when this driver set back? I say, of course. I says, I you had permission to set back. I says, I give him permission to set back, no problem. I says, nothing come behind. He had bags of clearance. I pulled signals up behind. No, not to worry about. You know. And he just says, he just put the, he just stumbled a bit, and then he just put the phone down and went away. Well, he would have reported that driver. You know, if that driver had set back without permission, he's in trouble. You see. Mm, yes. Yeah. I mean, a fellow could be on the main line. Yeah. If he made a little mistake, you know, these fellas that try and do them. That's what I thought. But there's a lot of, I mean, you see, the, um, the local inspectors and the real railway men, of course, understood these things. And they were like that. They said they'd been drivers as well, you see. Hmm. 
Yeah, so that was if, the, if there so had been sense. something coming behind him, there would have been no chance for him to go back, would there? Well, uh, if it had someone in right up his, up his backside there, uh, on a signal behind, uh, you couldn't, you know, that could be an AP. What, what it wouldn't be an AP because I wouldn't have run that train in front of him. Mm. It, it, because he wouldn't, it, or if he did, he would hang him out, put him in, in a Durham in the way of the AP. But mm. I, in that case, uh, that's it. Uh, you can't uh, do much then. Ah, but right. all he had to do then, well, he could do it then. He would carry on. Uh, if he come on the phone and say, hey, I can't have that next bus behind you. Or good. Yeah. He say, I said, just carry on to Durham. You made a mistake. You know. Mm-hmm. Go on to Durham and report to Durham that you haven't stopped at Chesley Street. That's yeah. all you can do. Yeah, yeah. Even then, not too bad. If he'd said back, then, mm-hmm. and there's no pay behind him, well, I'll tell you, that's only you trouble. But if he's had the sense to go carry on, you know, yeah. not setting back, he would, he, he, of course he would get, he wouldn't get taken as bad, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> Very Funny interesting. Old joke, the yeah. Funny old job. Yeah. Hi, John. It's, it's been great talking to you. And uh, I think these two questions uh, and your answers have been have been, been brilliant. Uh, I've, I've been, truly enjoyed listening to them, and I'm, I'm sure the viewers will as well. Um, what I'd like to say, John, is uh, would you be up for uh, more questions regarding your time? Uh, on the railways, uh, would, would you be up for more? Well, no problem, Tony. I enjoyed answering them questions. I've seen it 30 years since I've worked on the railways, nearly. You know, and of course, I mightn't be correct in all I've said. I might have forgot things, but I'll do my best. But I'll do my best. Any time, any questions, if I can answer them, to be best in my ability, you know. Oh, that, that's that's brilliant. Okay, because this I think this is going to carry on a bit more. I think John, because um, I think that, that the two comments in the last video has highlighted that, uh, which is great. Right, John. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Oh, well, you better get rid of that train. He's been standing at the board a long time there, too, on your mind. Okay, I'll get the train underway. <laughs> Right, so long, Tony. I'll see okay. you again next. Okay, catch you later. Bye now. Bye, Tony. <laughs> oh, it's going through a red light. I haven't changed the signal. <laughs> you what? <laughs> <laughs> I'd do that again. How oh, do you change them signals? Do you do it just with your finger or something? No, I've got a switch. It's on switch. Right, right. I'll have to. Oh, it's getting strong. Oh, man. Oh, I'll never make a signal then, John. <laughs> <laughs> I should have recorded that. Oh, I have recorded that. You're a good, you're a good driver. I think, I think I'll leave that in. <laughs>